Well, it's, it's been some time since uh, I put together my last video, and um, I hope to resume development of uh, additional lecture material on a little bit more regular basis. We'll see how it goes, perhaps once a week. Uh, I'm certainly pleased to see that um, a lot of you are getting, getting some benefit out of these uh, lecture videos, and um, so please uh, continue to subscribe and watch and uh, comment, and I'll try to get back to, uh, to you as, as, as time per permits, which is, you know, as you know, uh, is there's always, there's never enough time. So we left off last time talking about this uh, Dick's Interval Velocity, and uh, we were going to summarize, uh, we were going to discuss this in a little more detail, and then summarize the different velocities we've encountered. So this RMS velocity is, uh, we can think of it as a normal move-out velocity. That's the way we're going to use it. It's approximately equal to the normal move-out velocity. We'll look at this in more detail later on, but we have this simple expression for the root mean square velocity, and we'll see that we can actually pull the interval velocities out of this expression. So let's, let's take a look at this. The, Root mean square velocity is the root mean square, in this case, is just the square root of the mean of the squares of some quantity. In this case, that quantity is the uh, interval velocities. So we have the interval velocity squared. And you'll notice that rather than just divide by the total number, you know, as we might normally do in order to get an average or get a mean, we're multiplying them by um, t sub i's. The t sub i's, in this case, are the... Uh, interval transit times, the two-way interval transit time for through each of the uh, uh, n, n layers in the, uh, in the subsurface, down to the layer of interest here, the VRMSN. So this is just the square root, this is just the root mean square velocity of intervals overlying and including the nth layer down to the base of layer n. And t sub i, again, is just the uh, two-way interval transit time through the ith layer. So this is kind of like a weighting term. So we square both sides of that uh, relationship. We get the VRMS squared is equal to just this ratio. And then note, as we said, that this t0n, the two-way travel time down to the uh, nth interface, uh, just equal to this sum. So we can substitute that in this relationship here, divide both sides by t0n, we get, uh, or multiply both sides by t0n, we get the VRMS squared t0n is equal to, and then we have this uh, sum sitting over here by itself, and we're going to pull out a v sub n squared t sub n out of this sum, which is going to leave us with a sum from i equal 1 to n minus 1 of the, of this summation here. So we've just taken out one of the terms and we're limiting our sum from i equal 1 to n minus 1. So in this uh, expression we have the VRMS n squared t0n is equal to v sub n squared t sub n squared plus this sum as we as we noted. And we can also recognize that uh, this sum here can be rewritten as basically the just you know, looking at what we did previously with the, the VRMSN, uh, that we have this sum then equal to the VRMSN minus 1 squared T0 N minus 1. So the VRMSN T0 N, uh, VRMS, v, VRMSN squared T0 N is equal to the sum of these two terms. Uh, we have our VRMS n minus 1 squared t0 n, and we have this term that we pulled out. Uh, and then we're just going to uh, rearrange these terms into this expression over here, and then we're going to divide both sides by uh, our t0, t0 n. So um, in general, then, we would get, and just kind of simplifying the notation here, we would get that the um, v sub n squared, just you know, dividing by both sides by t sub n, uh, is going to be equal to this ratio. So we have these two terms over here. We divide by t sub n, take the square root of that, and then we get the uh, interval velocity for the nth layer. Sorry, I think I said this was t zero. Simplifying our notation, this is actually the um, two-way interval transit time through the nth layer. So, 
So and this is our vis of n now. So we've extracted a, an interval velocity for the nth layer. Hence the interval velocities of individual layers uh, can be determined from this uh, RMS velocity. I think you can see how we can just go uh, iterative, iteratively from layer to layer uh, in order to get the interval velocities. So what we're going to do, here's a little problem that uh, I'll leave you with. And um, <clears throat> it's probably worthwhile spending some time on this, uh, although it's kind of up to you. It's, it's a little bit of a labor. You have to type all this in, but it shouldn't take too much time to type this in. And it's a good exercise to go through uh, because, you know, when you go through these problems, uh, you, you know, you develop a, a, a better feel for what's going on. So, so you'll see that we have um, source receiver offsets going from 3 to 36, uh, 3 meters between each geophone, and, uh, or in the common midpoint gather. So this is a common midpoint gather. Notice that the um, uh, offsets here are just incremented uh, uh, by 3 meters each time. And so you're going to conduct some velocity analysis here. Um, of these three reflection events, and you're going to have to determine what the normal move-out velocities are from these uh, reflection times and offsets. And we're going to make uh, use of the fact that the normal move-out velocity is approximately equal to the RMS velocity. We'll use that relationship in order to determine the interval velocities. So here I've just plotted up the data for you. Um, we don't have a zero offset here. We could have a geophone at the uh, source, but it would probably get blown up. Um, but so here we have the uh, TX plot of the three reflection events. I think you can see, uh, you know, just kind of going back to our earlier analysis that um, these slopes, we have a steeper slope here. Um, tells us that the interval velocity here above reflector 1 is low relative to the average velocity or the RMS velocity or the NMO velocity for um, down to re reflector 2 and reflector 3. These have smaller slopes, larger velocities. So remember uh, we can look at the tails of these hyperbola and get a feeling for their velocity and it's really hard to tell whether the normal move out velocity down to re whether the interval velocity between reflectors two and three might actually be larger could be could be a little bit larger could be a little bit less it's hard to compare these two lines here so we have this uh, hyperbolic move out for these uh, three reflection events take some time to uh, to work to work through this we'll review the solution to this problem in the next video and um, so you know I would encourage you to, to spend some time working through this it's um, I think it's it's uh, you know it's it, it shouldn't take too much time actually to type those numbers in and go through the analysis uh, but let's think about what it is that you need to do and just take a take a quick review of some of the terms. This is your um, uh, V sub n squared. And we've shown how we got this relationship for the interval, interval velocity squared um, for layer n. This uh, VRMS velocity, this re represents the velocities obtained from the best fit lines. So what you're going to do is you're going to fit a trend line to... Um, to each of those uh, hyperbolas, but you're going to do it in a t squared x squared space. If you remember, uh, this is how we kind of made a transformation from hyperbolas to straight lines. So the t zero n again. This is just the sum of your interval times, and uh, you can read these directly off the the graph. Um, and your t sub n, uh, your delta t sub n is equal just to t0 n minus t0 n minus 1. This will be the two-way interval transit time between the n and n minus 1 th reflectors. P sub n is the interval velocity again for layer n. 
where layer n is the layer between reflectors n and n minus 1. It sits directly on top of the uh, nth reflector. So take some time with this. We'll uh, come back and talk about it next time. Uh, give, it a, give it a shot. I hope it goes well. Uh, and uh, see you on the next video.